Good morning, Alan, and good morning, everyone else. I'm Terry. Welcome to Tardis Spider. Today, the Patrick Troughton era, a character defined. If you enjoy this video, please like, subscribe, and leave a comment. And now, the Patrick Troughton era, a character defined. In November 1966, a new era in television drama begins. William Hartnell will change into Patrick Troughton, establishing the idea that would allow Doctor Who to be a program still popular and still broadcast 60 years later. They would not call it regeneration yet, just change. And with change came not a new face on the same Doctor, but the same Doctor with a new face and new personality. This will allow each following actor in the role to create their own version. In The Power of the Daleks, Patrick Troughton will put his own creative spin on the role. In The Power of the Daleks, Troughton will quickly define that this doctor confronts and defeats evil where he finds it. He also establishes that this doctor is thinking three or four steps ahead of everyone else. In the first episode, he will recover from the change, grab a hat and a recorder, walking out of the TARDIS looking for an adventure. It will not take long for the Doctor to get involved in the politics of the planet Vulcan, only to discover that these people are foolishly reawakening Daleks, thinking them to be servants. The Highlanders will bring Jamie McCrimmon to the series, and this ends the true historical in Doctor Who. In 1967, it is The Underwater Menace, presented in a melodramatic B-movie style, where the Doctor's penchant for hats and costumes would continue. The moon base also played as pulp science fiction, a more credible futuristic scenario thanks to Kit Peddler, with an even more frightening version of the Cybermen. Overambitious special effects would greatly impair the Macra Terror, a lost story. The giant crabs would give way to the rather horrific-looking chameleons in the Faceless Ones. Ben and Polly would decide to stay in their own time. Please remember, the Doctor could not control the flight of the TARDIS at this time. This story would melt straight into the evil of the Daleks, what was to be the last Dalek story. There is a civil war within the Daleks, and they appear to wipe each other out. The orphaned Victoria would join the Doctor and Jamie. The fourth recording block would end with the third Cyberman story in less than a year in The Tomb of the Cybermen. These silver giants are the perfect foe for the diminutive second Doctor. Now this story would reveal that the Doctor's skittish behavior often concealed a manipulative curiosity. The Troughton era was an age of monsters, and they would use and perfect the base under siege story. The fifth recording block began with location shooting in Wales. Wales would double for Tibet in The Abominable Snowmen. In the next still frozen adventure, we meet more aggressive giants, the Ice Warriors, in a story that would showcase current anxieties about technology. The final story broadcast is the enemy of the world. In a dystopian future, the evil dictator Salamander is played by Patrick Troughton. With a final battle in the TARDIS, the year would end. In the first complete story of 1968, the Yeti will return in The Web of Fear. Again, they are under the control of the Great Intelligence. This adventure in the London Underground is considered one of, if not the best, base under siege story. With the introduction of Colonel Leftwich Stewart, the groundwork for the future is being laid. The Fury from the Deep has more horror in confined places, this time on a gas drilling rig. The Australian censor clip of Quill and Oak is pure horror. In this story, we will first see the sonic screwdriver, and Victoria will tire from the danger and she will stay with the family. A full TARDIS crew will return with Zoe Harrett joining in The Wheel in Space, facing the Cybermen again in another base under siege. In this story, the Doctor will use the alias John Smith. 
writers Mervyn Hazeman and Henry Lincoln removed their names from The Dominators after this story was shortened by Derek Sherman. Another dispute, this one over the ownership of the Quarks, would threaten this story's status as the opening story of Season 6. The fifth recording block would end with The Mind Robber, a most successful journey into surrealistic worlds. This is a favorite of mine. The first episode has a certain unworldly feel about it. In a sobering start of the seventh recording block, it is The Invasion, with now promoted to Brigadier Leftwich Stewart and the newly formed unit battling the Cybermen. With this Stories Earth-based format, the future has been put in place. This is also the last episode for Kit Peddler. Robert Holmes scripted the Crotons with visual effects that disappoint. Holmes would go on to become one of Doctor Who's greatest talents, yet this is a slow start. With its punishing schedule, all of the Troughton series had at least 40 weekly episodes. This grind and the worry of being typecast would help Patrick Troughton decide to leave at the end of season six. Viewing figures had fallen below those of 1964 and 65, yet with the recent rotation of monsters and the success of the base under siege story, the viewing figures were improving. The Ice Warriors would attempt to contaminate and then conquer the Earth in the Seeds of Death. They will capture TMAT, spreading the Seeds of Death worldwide, broadcast early in the year, only after an uncredited rewrite by Terence Dix. With scripts a rare commodity, and another falling through, Robert Holmes would come through and write The Space Pirates for Terrence Dix. Yes, this is a lost story, but its reputation is less than stellar. Derek Sherman was in the producer's chair when the last two scripts fell through. Terrence Dix and Malcolm Hulk would write the epic War Games to end the season. Ten episodes in length, it covers lots of ground. After the aliens are defeated, the Doctor will call upon his people to return everyone. Unable to escape, the Doctor, Jamie, and Zoe are taken to the Doctor's homeworld, with the Doctor put on trial. In his defense, the Doctor will point out the evil he has faced, choosing to stop them. The court will take this into consideration and decide that, yes, he has defeated evil, and there is a place for him. In the universe. With that, Jamie and Zoe are returned to their own times and the memories of only their initial meeting of the Doctor. The Doctor will be exiled without the TARDIS and without the knowledge of how to fly the TARDIS. He will also face forced change. The screen will go dark and season six and the black and white era have come to an end, leaving the viewers wondering if Doctor Who would return. Next, it's the John Pertry era, Earthbound Exile and Redemption. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and please don't ever forget, a child cannot have a favorite book if they do not have one. Give a child a book today. So enjoy your journey through time and space. Good night, everyone.